So you can hear the engine ticking over on this 1.8 diesel engine at uh, 600 RPM. When I put the clutch down, there's a slight increase of about 300. So we're now at 850 RPM. Now the window's open, there's a reason for that which I'll explain in a moment. That's because the first gear, the second gear, we hear it whistling, so that's the turbocharger, which is actually over a very wide rev range. And that does help you out a lot when you're going up in as we are in Wales and in the Lynn Peninsula. Asking me to shift up now. Actually, asking me to go to six gear. 50 miles per hour, uh, just under 1500 RPM. And the car will accelerate at most inclines, even if you really do mess up a gear change. The turbocharger does uh, kick in to help you out, so it's really quite a gem of an engine in all the cars that I've driven over five years since I've been testing. Oops. Speed bump there. In terms of space, the ASX isn't the best. If you compare it to the Skoda the SE, which you can actually remove the seats from, obviously this doesn't compare, although it's got a split seat back here. Comparing it to a Kia Sportage, the seat backs actually are more flat, so they have a better loading surface. And there's just enough space for me to demonstrate a bit of my great dancing skills. <laughs> just joking. <laughs> <laughs> now the king of the service is the Nissan Qashqai, and uh, for the ASX to have a better chance in that market, I think Mitsubishi needs to take advantage of all the environmental technologies that the ASX has to offer, for example the regenerative braking and the auto start, start which don't forget is, is standard. I think they just need to be marketed a bit more on the website because it's not that apparent. Now the jet fighter grill is characteristic of all Mitsubishi cars and this is no exception on the ASX. Although it looks like it's been snorting a bit too much because it's lost its septum. The wings are made out of plastic and that scores better in the NCAP pedestrian tests with a score of 60%. We've sustained a scuff here on the, the plastic wings, that's another advantage. So that will cost less to repair than a normal steel wing. You'll notice our ASX3 has no sat nav, even though it costs £20,199. You'd have to opt for the next one, which is the ASX4. So it's a little bit mean of Mitsubishi not to include a sat nav, I think, for that amount of money. What they've done, you see the injector, direct. Direct injection? Yeah, it's, you know, it's direct. So is that a good design of an engine? Yeah, it is. Why? You know, because the space, hmm. yeah. and it's easy access to remove. And like a yeah. Peugeot Citroen engine, no. for example? Pu no, this one is even more simpler than the Peugeot, um, you know, Renault design. Right. And all that. It's, you know, this one has got very uh, access to it. Hmm. Okay. You know? More valves. That's why it gives it a distinctive sound. Yes, right. more okay. valve into it. Yeah. I think some of them even carry four in each, uh, four in each pot. Right. You know? I haven't opened it for me to know exactly what it is. But right. That's what, that's what it would mean. Okay. You know?
Look at the guy. This I love to work on this. It's easy, everything. Even the turbo, I can take this turbo up. If, when I'm oh, when I'm struggling with your one, I'll take three of this up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where is the turbo? Yeah, right, right, right here, right oh, in front okay. of your face. Is it a chain, you know, or is it a rubber timing belt? No, it's chain driven. Chain driven. It's on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, oh my, is it? Do you make an accent? <laughs> Really? It's Japanese. So Emily, what do you think about the quality of plastics on this car? Because Mitsubishi have said that they've actually made them softer. Certainly the top of the dashboard they have. What do you think? Well, I'm no expert on car <laughs> interior plastics, but um, it's cheap and nasty. It's, right. Yeah, it's not... On the doors? On the doors, I would say it's um, it's budget. What could they do to make it better? <laughs> make it better quality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this car has the world's first variable valve timing, which essentially is petrol engine technology. The advantages of that are additional valves for the engine to breathe through and a better MPG figure with more fuel efficiency. Now the trip computer states that we've driven about 130 miles and that we've got another potential 460 miles. So we're talking around 600 uh, complete range. Now I'll let you know at the end of the travels how the Mitsubishi ASX does, but in any crossover vehicle that I've driven that uh, hasn't been the case, that's unheard of. We've driven the car at present about 500 miles and the range it's given me on the 63 litre diesel fuel tank, because this is a 1.8 diesel don't forget, is 180 so. We've got, I suppose, 680 miles potential to an empty tank. And using the information on the trip computer, average 66 uh, miles per gallon since the start of the, the trip, which has covered a lot of the Lynn Peninsula in North Wales. And of that, about a fifth has been motorway. So it's a very good MPG thing, and I have not been driving it, uh, especially economically. It's a very comfortable car. I don't feel tired driving it. Some quality issues, I suppose, that we mentioned before with the uh, plastics and the interior, but um, it is really the thinking person's crossover vehicle. Consider those aspects. So it's a good result for me. Maybe not as much image as the innocent cash guy, but it's um, a durable car. Don't forget Japanese reliability. We've got an MPG indicator. Depending on how you drive the car, you've also got a shift indicator for the gearbox. We have a fuel warning, you can see the orange triangle there with the exclamation mark inside it and that's just come on with 80 miles range left of fuel and that uh, warning comes on when you're down to 10 litres of fuel so the tank of the Mitsubishi ASX is 63 litres therefore we've used 53 litres of fuel. Working that out Dividing it by the mileage that we've covered, which is 543 miles. Of that, about a quarter has been on the motorway. We've achieved an overall miles per gallon figure of 46.58. It's 47 miles per gallon in a 1.8 diesel, which in my book is very good. And this is a crossover vehicle, don't forget, with the additional weight. So well done Mitsubishi engineers, a great engine and there's the refuel warning.